Welcome to Cat Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 8.8. All right. So we're asked to find i of t and v of t for time greater than zero in this circuit. So the first thing you notice is that we don't have a resistor. So r is equals to zero, right? Now that r is equals to zero, we can conclude that we have a lossless circuit. Now this alpha, let me just find a new pen, another pen, quickly. As I was saying, the alpha, this alpha over here, is associated with damping, or it is the damping factor. And if the circuit is lossless, then we do not expect a response to attenuate or to decrease in amplitude in any way, right? So now that we know it's a lossless circuit, there'll be no attenuation, attenuation of the amplitude of whatever response we're interested in. And therefore, we can conclude that the damping factor is zero. Now, let's proceed to find the resonant frequency or the undamped frequency. So we're gonna use this formula and plug in the values of L, which is five, and C, which is uh, 0 0.2. So plugging in the values into this equation or that value over there, you're gonna find, so this is, should be 0 0.1, square root of that, should be something along those lines divided by that. So it give you a value of, so this is one over five, basically. This is one over five multiplied by five. So you're gonna have square root of one, which is one, so one divided by one is one radians, or radians per second. So that is the value of the resonant frequency. And now you'll notice that the damping factor is less than your resonant frequency, which implies that we have an underdamped response. Now that we have an underdamped response, we know that the general formula for an underdamped response is I of t is equal to E minus alpha t multiplied by A1 cosine of omega d t plus a2 sine of omega d t, right? Now that we don't have any attenuation or this value is zero, then we can just simplify that to just be, um, this is one, so substituting zero there, it's just one, and therefore we have a1 cos omega d t plus a2 sine omega d t, right? So that is what we basically have over there. And we're now going to proceed to find the, the roots, the roots of this, this circuit or the characteristic equation using the values which you found over here. So S1 and S2 have values of negative alpha plus or minus square root of alpha squared subtract omega zero squared and substituting this is zero this is zero and here we found that to be one so we only have negative one squared so one squared and the negative of that is going to give you j so square root of negative one is j so your answer should be plus or minus j in complex form of course right so that is what we have over there we have plus or minus j as our root and we we are going to proceed to actually find the response or the initial conditions which are going to help us to solve all of this so this here this is our transient response right and we're interested in the total response for our time greater than zero but let's first find our transient response using our initial conditions so for time less than zero we have this is not active for time less than zero because it's multiplied by a step a step function over here right and this is out basically so it'll be an open circuit and we only have these two so there's no source or there's nothing which excites both of these or that provides energy which they can store and we can therefore conclude that v at time zero is equal to zero volts and i at time zero is equal to zero amperes right we now move on to 
just after zero, when this is now in play, uh, we can now form a formula using our top node over here. So using the top node, doing KCL over there, or node analysis, whatever you want to call it, we're going to have negative 12 because it's going into the node. We're going to assume that the current is going out of the node for the capacitor, and we're going to have 0 0.2, which is the capacitor value, which is the formula CdV over dt for current. So 0 0.2, and we're going to say dV over dt. Then finally, we're going to say I of 0. This is at 0. All of this is at 0. And we create all of that equals to 0, right? So now that we have this formula over here, we can find the initial conditions which which are going to help us, or we can just do this quickly. So this is for dV over dt. We can just take this. This is zero. So dV zero dt. This is zero, and this is twelve. So take, taking this to the other side of the equal sign, we're going to have twelve. We're going to divide it by zero point two. And you're going to have a value of, I think, 60 volts per second. That is the expected value which we have over there. But now, this is not essentially going to directly help us because our plan is to first find I of T. And from I of T, we can essentially just find our V of T. So let's do this quickly. Let's find the initial condition for the first value which you're act actually interested in which is rt right so let's put this aside and let's go ahead and say v0 is equal to l di0 dt and this is associated with our inductor and from this you can directly find your di over dt at time zero so di over dt because these share the same voltage they're all in parallel right they share two nodes therefore they're all in parallel and therefore share this v so this v we found to be zero and we're just going to say zero divided by l which is zero amperes per second so we now have two initial conditions associated with our i so we have that one and we have this one over here so we can now use these these in this formula to find the coefficients so, so let's do that quickly so i of zero is zero and di with dt at time zero is also zero so let's use that in our formulas we're going to have a1 this formula here this simplified formula over here which we have right this is for our transient response but we're now interested in total response and therefore we're going to add the final value which is 12 right so 12 as the total response of the general formula of something like this this is for an uh, under damped so it's going to be IS, which is the source. Then we're going to have this A1 cosine omega D T. That's A2 cosine omega D T, right? So this IS is basically the source. So it's going to be 12. And the, the damping factor is 0. So this is going to be 1. We're just going to add whatever is inside here. So we have A1 cosine of omega D T. We find for, from our, our roots which is that, it's just J, which is 1, right? So omega omega D is basically 1. So you just have T over there, and you have sine T as well. So now, at time 0, I of 0, we're just going to substitute 0 wherever we see T, substituting 0 there, substituting 0 there. We're going to have 1 here and 0 there. So this is 12 plus A1 is equal to 0. So A1 is equal to negative 12. So that is the first value. Moving on to the second value, which you're going to find after differentiating. So di, we found that di of dt at 0 is 0. So let's differentiate this. So you're going to have 0, negative a1, sine t. Then you're going to have plus a2, cosine t. Substituting 0, so that if we satisfy the di of dt at time 0 is equal to 0, we're going to have 0 over here. Then we're going to have a2 is equal to 0. So now I have both the coefficients, and we can therefore go ahead and substitute them in the general formula over here. So finally, i of t is equal to 12 plus a1, which we found to be minus 12. So we can just say minus 12 
then we have cosine of t and a2 is zero so everything which is multiplied by it by it is zero we can just factor 12 out and we may have one subtract cosine of t amperes and this is your i of t for time greater than zero but we aren't done with the question we're left with finding our v now this v as i previously said is the v across all the elements and therefore you can say Using this I over here, we can say V, which is the voltage across the inductor, is equal to L di divided by dt. The inductor value is 5. What? Let me see. Why did I write ohms? This should be in Henry's over here. This should be in Henry's. Sorry. So the inductor value is 5. Then we're going to differentiate this to actually find the total value. So it's 5 multiplied by the derivative of this formula up here. So 12 is going to be 0, and negative that is basically going to be positive sign, right? So it's going to be positive sign. So let's see that quickly. It's going to be positive sign multiplied by 12. So 12 sine t. And therefore, your v of t is equal to 6t sine t volts that is for time greater than zero